In this video we are going to be setting up some lighting and shadows to go along with the day-night cycle we made in our last video. The only asset you'll need specific for this lesson is the uh, Star Zero One texture um, that we're going to use for our lights, but also project files and other assets are available on itch.io and on my GitHub. The links are in the description below. In following along the whole time, you're going to want to grab the stick scene that we've been working with. If you haven't, you're just going to want a scene um, that's got maybe a sprite in there. You can use the um, the flaming stick or the branch or whatever it is I've called it in my assets in the, the itch or the GitHub, but anything's going to be fine for this. So what we want to do is add a new node to this scene, which is a point light 2D. We add it there. The warning we get is telling us that we need a texture. So the only asset I said you needed this time was this particular texture. So star 01.png, I'm gonna drag that into the texture field there. And that has now added that texture and made the warning go away. What we're going to do next is come down to where it says shadow. We're going to expand that and we're going to enable shadows for this particular one. So this stick is in our cave scene and we want to make sure shadows are being cast in that scene. All right. So when this is on the ground, it's going to cast those shadows. Excellent. That is the main bit we wanted to do there. The other thing I think it's worth noting is the color for this. We should probably make it a bit more orangey to match the actual um, branch thing that we're using here, I think, as well. So let's find some sort of color that's going to be fine. There we go, sort of an orange color. And our energy, you can change that up or down, and you can see how it affects the sprite. So that's just changing how bright this basically is. So I'm going to put that to, say, 0.82 is fine, and save it. And now I want to go and add another point light 2D to our player. So if you have been following along, you know that our player picks up that torch really early on in the game. So he's going to be carrying it around a lot. So what we're going to do is add a point light 2D in here as well. And it's just going to make it easier rather than trying to work out how to attach the torch and blah, blah, blah. We're just going to have his own point light 2D for him. It's also going to need that same texture. We're going to do the same thing in terms of the color and try and, oops, try and get that orangey sort of hue like we talked about. I don't care too much about it being precise. What we're not going to do though is turn shadows on for this one. Otherwise, he will constantly be casting a, his own shadow and it just looks a bit weird. So we're going to leave shadows turned off for the one that he's got, but we're going to add a script to this one because uh, we don't want it to be showing all the time, only when we're carrying the torch and only when the um, sun is down. So that's our next task. Attach a script to that point light today. Let's just give it a new name actually. Let's call it um, stick light and give it its own script called stick light. That's fine. So we're extending point light 2D, excellent. Again, we're not gonna have a ready function, but we will have a process function. And what we're gonna do in here, um, actually, I'm, rather than me typing the whole thing, because we've actually done this before. So when we made our canvas modulate in the last episode, we did almost this exact thing. So we, um, added in an extra little bit here because it's based on whether our player has the stick or not. But here where we've got VAR time of day, um, all of this is pretty much exactly the same as what we did for our canvas modulate. So this point light is only going to be visible when the sun is down um, and the player has the stick, which is just something we have in our global. But that's almost identical to our, uh, what was it called, day night, wasn't it? So if you go up to our day night, you can see here almost exactly the same script. But that's the one we're doing in our stick light. So that is that bit done. a light occluder in just a moment, but let's just test and make sure that everything we've got working, uh, everything we've done so far works. So we want to go and start our world. Um, so just run the game. So I've set it so it starts at night time and we've not grabbed the torch yet. So let's go into our cave. There is our torch. You can see that it's high, um, illuminating. I've now picked it up. And because we set up that script the way we did, I'm currently illuminated. And you can mess around with the settings um, for this as well. Some of the things that you might like to play with. Um, actually, I think that's that's got too much. Of a, we don't really want it to be transparent. Our um, canvas. I don't remember doing that, but nevertheless, it was done. Let me run the game again and just double check. All right. 
Yeah, so that looks a bit better. It's not as murky. I can come in, I can grab my flaming torch and that extends around. Yeah, there we go. That looks a lot cleaner now. So you want it to be, uh, you don't want it to be transparent, your canvas modulator. I'm not sure why I did that or when, but there we go. So you can see the torch follows our dude around. Now, next step is the shadow part of all this. We've done our light. Now it's time for the shadow. So let's select our player. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a new node and our node is going to be called a Light Occluder 2D. So there's our Light Occluder 2D. We're going to need our 2D view for this. And we need to add a, it'll say a polygon, right? So we need to draw a polygon for it. Now, there is a couple of ways you can do it. I'm going to only draw the polygon around our player's feet because I feel that that actually um, works better for me. So I... I find that it gives you a neater sort of shadow if you're just sort of doing the feet like that. So there you go. That's all that's needed to be done there. We can save that. Um, anything else we need to do? No, mask one is fine. Um, I don't have an issue with any of those things. What have I done here? Why is it still giving me an error? I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. It's just gone away. It was just being nasty. All right, save that. I want to also put a shadow on um, our mum. So I don't think I've got her scene open at the moment. Let's go find her. Um, just so that we can definitely get a good view of what I'm talking about. So here she is here. We're going to add in a light occluder 2D as well. And just like we did for the last, we're going to do it around her feet. So create a new polygon. Just come back there like that. Excellent. Save it. Let's run our game again and see if all that works. Okay, so grab, I just can't help myself but grab the supplies that I put there. So you can already see the shadow that mummy's casting. Let's uh, try and make this a bit bigger. I should have just made this whole cave seem bigger, but anyways, there you go. So you can see the shadow mum's casting and by me just doing it at the feet, I reckon that shadow looks a bit neater. Now I'll go up, you can see my shadow appears, but when I take it, what's going to happen is these shadows will disappear. There we go. Now, the reason I did that is just because of out here, if you're always casting that shadow, it looks a bit odd. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. And I'm going to turn on the player's light, um, stick light shadows. Alrighty. Because you'll see that they actually always are from the same perspective and it gets a bit weird. And there might be a way to fix that that I'm just not aware of yet. So there's our normal shadows. I've turned it on now. It looks fine still for the mum. You can see his shadow, so he's always backlit, no matter which direction he's going. So I just found it's easy to let that one, um, leave that one turned off. But you are welcome to do with it as you please. All right, I think we're pretty much done, guys. Let's go over our must main might so you know exactly what you need to do to make sure all of this works. So to make all this work, what you have to do is add the point light 2D to the stick scene or your scene of some sort. And to the player scene, you need to add a script so that the light is only active during the nighttime. And you also need to add a light occluder to your player or any other object to cast shadows. What you may like to do, well, keep experimenting with adding other lights to your scenes and keep in mind the uh, global time and how you might turn that on and off. Um, and what you might like to do is expand your cave scene and give it some permanent lights in different places and create a whole level out of something like that. Well, if you've been following along the entire series, your flame and stick is now an actual torch that you can carry with you. Otherwise, you have now learned how uh, point light 2Ds work as well as shade occluders. Next time, we are going to build a weather system to go along with our day, night and light and shadow systems, really build out those environmental controls. And the quote I'll leave you with this week is from WB Yates. And he said, the world is full of magical things, patiently waiting for our senses to grow sharper. Thanks, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.